How long does it really take to design, sculpt, print, and paint your own little model for tabletop wargaming? Well, I gave myself 24 hours to find out, and it went a lot faster than I thought it would. Now, since this was my first time trying something like this, I decided to start with something fairly basic, a little objective marker for my tabletop game Spire Seas. This was something that I needed to make and was fairly certain I could get done in about 24 hours. For my characters, I usually start with one of my pre-made base meshes, and that felt sort of like cheating for a challenge like this. So instead of trying to make something completely from scratch and possibly failing, I gave myself a little slack and started with something that was mostly made of inorganic shapes. That said, this project went fairly well, so if you'd like to see me make a full character in a similar timeline, then let me know down in the comments, and I'll give it a shot. But for now, let's jump into this little project and see how it went. All right, it is 11 o'clock. I've got my coffee, some ideas, and let's hope everything works well today. My main goal for the first hour or so is just to get a few designs set up and finalized, and from there I can start sculpting and hopefully have a finished sculpt a little after dinner time. I'm starting with something pretty simple because I'm not really sure how I'm going to feel in 18, 17 hours from now, so I want to make sure that I can at least finish the sculpting part, and then once painting comes around I can just slowly relax into it for the next last chunk of this time. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, no time to waste, so let's get started. For the concept, I kept things pretty simple, but tried to include enough ideas to work quickly once I got into Blender. These objective markers are meant to represent salvaged tech in a post-apocalyptic world, so I tried to include a nice mix of sci-fi and rubbly bits. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is the bell that tells me it is 12 o'clock. So it's been about an hour and I've finished three quick sketches of my potential designs and I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm still kind of waking up, <laughs> but my coffee is finished and I've switched to ah, very, very cold water, which is good. So you can probably see my designs right up here. I'm pretty happy with all three of them. I think the middle one is my favorite, but it's also the tallest, which means it'll take the longest to print. So I might start off with the one on the left, but it's also a little more complicated and a little more vague. So I have a general idea, but it might take me a little longer to sculpt it. So I have to quickly decide between which of those two I'm going to actually make. Uh, I'll probably end up doing the first one, but Regardless, I have to start out by making a quick little base and some rubble. So we're going to get started on that over in Blender. Once in Blender, I started by roughing out a quick base and then adding in some simple shapes to block out the locations. I ended up going with the middle design after all, since it was the one I had the clearest idea of in my head. Once I was happy with the block out, I went in object by object adding in detail. These days, I'm trying to be more conscious of the relative size of these details, to avoid making anything impossible or boring to paint. I certainly could have added in more fine detail here, but I'm not sure how much it would have really helped the finished product, and I think, for me, this was a step in the right direction. And it wasn't all that long before that step was finished. All right. Well, it's been a couple hours, it's now 2 o'clock, about, and I feel pretty good. Uh, 
most of the shapes on my first terrain piece are all blocked out and next is just adding detail little nicks and scratches and things like that just to bring out uh, a little more character to the piece but other than that i'm feeling pretty confident um, we'll see how long it actually takes to print and paint up but this might not take as long as i thought it would so yeah, we'll see. For this phase, I first made sure to apply any modifiers on my objects, like mirroring, then subdivide them to prepare them for sculpting. As I mentioned in an earlier video, I like to add a few loop cuts here and there before subdividing to balance out the final geometry, especially on any large flat surface. Then, once everything has been subdivided a few times, I head into sculpt mode and just use the clay strips brush and move brush to add some tweaks, dings, and scratches wherever I felt like it. I also did the same thing on the base itself, to give it a feeling of dirt or grime built up over generations. This is one section that I can easily get carried away with. so. I tried to be extra cautious about how much time I spent on each object. Alright, well, it's 4.30, so a couple hours after the last update, and uh, I think the first objective marker is finished. Well, at least more or less, you can take a look right over here. From here, the next step is just to add some supports and get it started on printing. Hopefully supporting it won't be too difficult since I tried my best to make it supported vertically, but with bases, supporting the bottom can always be a little bit tricky. So we'll see how it goes. All right. When adding in supports on my model, I first try to think about where most of the important details are and keep that side on the top. Then I angle it a bit to avoid large flat spaces on the bottom and start adding in supports on the lowest points, or islands. The integrated base on this model was a bit of a challenge since it meant I had to force some strange angles on my supports. That said, I was feeling pretty confident overall. All right, well, uh, that took about an hour, which is a little longer than I expected, but I did take a quick break to eat a power bar, so that might have been why. But it's now about 5.30, so it's already in the printer. I usually print out four copies for my tests just to make sure there's no differences with locations on the sheet itself, um, and hopefully everything goes well. We'll see. The thing that makes this a real challenge is definitely the length of time of the print, which is why I started with an objective marker for this first time. But so far I feel kind of ahead of schedule, so as long as the prints turn out okay and I don't have to redesign or resupport everything, then I think I'm on track to finish much sooner than I anticipated. I don't quite have enough time to make a whole new marker and print and paint those as well, uh, but who knows? <laughs> Let's hope everything works well. With the printer running, I finally had some time to eat, relax, and get everything set up for the next stage. Things like choosing my paints and preparing my wet palette. And with all that work under my belt, I was starting to feel like this would be more like a 12-hour challenge instead. I was wrong. All right, it's nearly 8 o'clock, and there's only about 10 minutes left on the print, but I can already tell one of them failed. So hopefully one of the other three survived it, and I can get that one finished, painted, and ready to go. But this might turn into a longer night after all. We'll see. But I'm full after a good dinner, so I'm ready to do it if that's what it takes. Let's take a look. Normally, I'm really not that bothered by getting some failures on my first few test prints. It lets me see where I made a mistake in the model or need to adjust some supports before releasing it into the wild. But in this case, 
I was less than thrilled. That print time, after all, was a significant chunk of my 24-hour time limit. Well, unfortunately, all of them failed. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to have to go back to my support drawing board. I think I know what the problem was, and that is they all seemed to fail on the base. So since nothing ended up on the supports at all, I think that means I need thicker, stronger supports on the bases. I don't really have much experience printing on the base because I usually print my models without the bases and then print the bases support free. So yeah, kind of new territory for me, and I guess I should have been better prepared for it. Well, anyway, just means another couple hours printing, but let's give it a shot. After cleaning out the tank on my printer, it was pretty clear that the main problem was the base. I could have simply added in a few thicker supports and called it good, but I took the opportunity to go back over the whole model and really make sure I hit every island. I really didn't want to print these out a third time. All right, so I redid the supports and everything is back in the printer for round two. Hopefully we'll get something better this time. I'm pretty sure I supported it maybe a little too much. So hope everything actually comes off the supports cleanly and, well, the main thing is I don't want to get any fails. As it is, the printer time for this next round is going to push us over the 12 hour mark, unfortunately, but I still am pretty confident that everything's going to get done before 24 hours. So, yeah. Time to wait. And maybe play some video games. Oh, also, for some reason, my microphone stopped recording after this point, so apologies for the really rough camera audio from here on out. Please forgive me. Alright, round two of printing is done, and so far it looks like everything came out well. I'll have to double check once I get them out of the printer, but for now I think I'm on track. It is currently... 1230. <laughs> so a bit later than I had expected earlier, but well within my 24 hour budget. So let's get these out of the oven. There is nothing quite like the feeling you get when you first pull some successful prints out of your machine, especially when you make them yourself. Each model is like a little Christmas present, just waiting to be peeled free of its supports. Though, that sometimes turns to frustration if the supports are tougher than expected. Alright. Well, all of them turned out great. Well, I did maybe go a little overboard on the supports, <laughs> it turns out. That was not as easy as it could be, so I'll probably be updating those before I put these online. But, for now, I have some nice finished pieces. I don't know how well you can see that. Maybe let's take a look at some shots, maybe. Yeah, not bad. Anyway, now that these are all printed up, all I have to do is get them painted and we can call it good. But to do that, I need to prime them first. And right now it's about one in the morning and about four degrees outside, so I'm gonna have to bundle up. Wish me luck. It was dark and cold. All right. We are now safely back inside where it's warm, waiting for some paint to dry. So after, I don't know, a little bit of time, should be ready to get on with the rest of the paint job. Honestly, printing 
and waiting for paint to dry are probably the longest parts of this challenge. And there's not much I can do about it. Now, from this point, I pretty much stopped filming updates, since I would have had to move the camera and mic each time. And besides, I was starting to get pretty scatterbrained anyway, and didn't really follow much of a plan or anything. So instead, here's a rough overview of the painting process. I primed the models in Mr. Mahogany, giving them a nice dirty undercoat. Then I added gray to the antennas and a slightly darker gray to the base of the tower. I followed that with some color, a bit of red for the antenna, like you might find on top of some real comms towers, and a bit of yellow on the secondary box thingy. I then added a bit of black to add contrast, along with some more red. Eventually, I moved on to the dirt, then colored in the cord and rubble. This is what I usually think of as the ugly stage. With the base colors down, I went over the whole thing in a brown wash, before moving on to some rust and some metallics for chipping. Finally, I colored in the rim of the base. And, since I was still well under my time limit, I went ahead and gave it a bit of my favorite mossy green flocking, using a bit of watered-down PVA glue. With all that done... And... That's it. Well... Here it is. All finished. And I am... Very tired. <laughs> That last step took a lot longer than expected. I think most of it was just waiting for some coats to dry, but even so, it is now 5.30 and I'm ready for sleep. That said, I managed to design, sculpt, print twice, <laughs> and paint my own little objective marker for my game Spire Seas. So I call that a success. It only took, wait, late night math, <laughs> about 17 hours, 18 hours. I'll do the math later. But, I'm pretty pleased with it. Now, I don't think I could do that with a miniature, a model, a figure. <laughs> but, I think I could at least sculpt one in less time than that, if I stuck to it. Regardless, that's it for today. I'm going to bed. So, with the sun just beginning to rise, I slinked off to my warm, cozy blankets and promptly passed out. And after a good morning's rest, I came back to admire my work. And there we have it, from absolutely zero to a fully finished tabletop ready model in well under 24 hours. I know it's not as exciting as a full character, but I think I was right to assume that designing, modeling, sculpting, printing, and painting a character from scratch would have been a little too much for me to handle in just 24 hours. Still, I'm pleasantly surprised with how well I was able to pull this off. And by giving myself a timeline, I think I forced myself to focus on some of the more important aspects of miniature design. Things like the relative scale of the details and the positions of each object. From a distance, this model seems pretty much as interesting as some of my minis, 
even though it lacks a lot of that fiddly little detail. And it was much easier and more fun to paint. So I will definitely keep that in mind when working on my next character. In the meantime, this little guy is currently available for free on MyMiniFactory.com, so head over there if you'd like to grab your own little 3D printable miniature objective marker for Spire Seas or any other sci-fi game. And if you want to learn more about how to make your own post-apocalyptic terrain to go with it, you can check that out right over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.